Okay. Okay. So on Thursday we introduced the notion of uh, a measurable function. So we, had, we said that um, f from a to r is measurable if the domain a is measurable and for any alpha in r the set of points in x, x in a such that f of x is uh, larger than alpha is, uh, is measurable as well. Okay, and probably the last proposition that we prove is the following. I just want to, to recall you. Let f from a to the extended real number, okay, uh, a in m, then we have that f is measurable if and only if two facts holds. We have that for any set B in R, which is open, F minus B belongs to the sigma algebra of measurable set. And then we have that the pre-image of plus infinity and the pre-image of minus infin min infinity is uh, uh, again a measurable set. Okay. So now, uh, so the purpose now is to say, to check if we can, if we can say something uh, more about this property. If we, if we can extend this property to more general set than only open. For instance, from, for Borel set, if it holds. So the answer is yes. And indeed, we prove the following theorem. is what about if if b belongs to the sigma algebra of Borel set okay so again you start by you take a a measurable set so the domain must be measurable then we have that f We have a measurable function <coughs> and then we can show that indeed for any Borel set of course of the extended real line we have that the pre-image under f of a measurable function of this Borel set is again um, a measurable set, okay? So I want just to stress, to remind you, but of course you know that it is the, the class of the Borel set is a sigma algebra. And indeed, we will strongly use this, this fact because the, the proof of this theorem is not direct. It's not direct. So we will argue in this way. So we define a collection A for which <coughs> this property holds. Okay, so we define, okay, some, for instance, italic A, the set of 
of uh, the set in R such that the pre-image of A is measurable. Okay, now we want to prove that this is a sigma algebra, okay? So we want to prove Okay, and then we will see that once we prove this, then we are done, okay? Okay. Okay, so we have that uh, the empty set belongs to A. <coughs> because the pre-image of the empty set is the empty set as well, which is measurable. Okay. Then we have that. Assume that you have a set A, which belongs to this italic A. And then what about A complement? So we have that A complement still belongs to A because the pre-image of A complement is the pre-image of A, which by assumption belongs to, uh, is a measurable set complement. So at the end, we still end up with, with a measurable set. And then what remains to prove is to consider <coughs> a countable collection of, uh, of set in this, uh, uh, in this family. Okay, so start if we have that A n belongs to A. Then indeed the union of the countable union of A n still belongs to A, since you have that <coughs> the pre-image <coughs> of that union. Can be expressed as the countable union of the pre-image of A n, which is, these are by definition measurable, by assumption measurable, and this we have that also the, the union is measurable. So finally, we get from these three uh, uh, property that A is a sigma algebra, and then we shall see that um, the sigma algebra of the Borel set is contained here. Okay, B this is comes from from what we prove uh, on Thursday. So we observe that okay. Uh, okay, this comes from the fact that maybe you can you 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 can see this because because you have that uh, the family of the open set is contained in a okay by by the former proposition And so, also the sigma algebra generated by the open set must be contained in A, because it's the smallest one, you know, you, you prove. So, because you have that, the sigma algebra generated by the open set is contained in A, and this indeed coincides 
this is by definition the, the sigma algebra of the Borel set. So finally, <coughs> so what you have that if A is in BR, then you have that A belongs to A, and so the pre-image under F of A is, is measurable, okay? And so we are done. Okay, so th this is why I told you that the proof is not direct. Okay. Okay, now we will introduce another notion which is completely somehow analogous and similar uh, to the notion of, uh, of measurable function, okay? May I raise this part? So I introduced the notion of uh, um, Borel function. I, I don't want to spend too much time on this because, I, as I told you, it's completely analogous uh, with what we did with, with the measurable function, okay? So ba basically, you start with a Borel set B, okay? And you consider F a function which is defined which has, the, has a domain, this Borel set, with values in the extended real line, we will say that is a uh, Borel function if uh, you have, uh, in analogy, for any alpha in R, the set is kind of f of x, uh, sorry, larger than alpha, is, uh, is a Borel set, okay? So basically, you can somehow repeat all what we did for measurable function, for instance, the fact that the sum of two measurable function is a measurable function replaces, replacing the term measurable with Borel function. So the, the sum of two Borel function will be a Borel function and so on, okay? Okay, so repeat, you can, we can repeat uh, what has been done. by replacing a measurable set with Borel set and uh, um, measurable function with uh, Borel function, okay? And for instance, in particular, you can also prove this theorem, if you have f, a function from a Borel set to the extended real line, uh, is a Borel, assume that, that it is a Borel function, then for any, um, for any Borel set B tilde, you have that the pre-image under F of this Borel set is a Borel set. Okay. Okay, now the question is, 
So what about if we compose a measurable function with a Borel function? What do we what we obtain? And and moreover, is it important the way that we compose so the, the order of composition? Okay, so this corollary partly answer to this question. So you have that. Okay, so you, if you have that f, uh, assume that f is the Borel function. So it's defined on b, which is a Borel set with values in r. This is a Borel function. And we have g from a to r. This is a measurable function. OK, of course, we have that B is a Borel set, <coughs> and A is a measurable set. OK, so if we, and OK, we have also to assume that G of A, the set of image of G, is contained in B. OK, from this, you already understand the way we compose. So then we have that F compose G is, is measurable, OK? So how can we prove this? We took, we take some alpha, no? Some test number, if you want. And so you, you, you have to, to check if the pre-image of this composition of a set of the type uh, alpha plus infinity, for instance, if it is measurable, OK? OK, so by the law <coughs> composition, you have that this is equal to G, to the pre-image under G of the pre-image of alpha plus infinity. OK, so this is a Borel function, F. So this is a Borel set, OK? This belongs to, this is a Borel set. This is a measurable function, so the pre-image of a Borel set under a measurable function is a measurable set, OK? And so we are done. OK? This is a Borel function, f, no? By definition of Borel function, you have that this set is a Borel set, OK? So you have that this set here, the pre-image of this is a Borel set. So you take the pre-image of, of this Borel set under G, which is measurable, OK? And so you end up with the measurable set, OK? OK, then, uh, of course, now the natural question is, what if we, if we consider the other way to compose them? Did we end up still with a the, with the measurable function or not? What do you think? So the answer is no. <laughs> but OK, in order to construct a counterexample, we need just to, to introduce, um, to show something else somehow. And uh, indeed, now we also, we also see that, so, so far we saw that um, the set of parts of R strictly contains the sigma algebra of the measurable set, because we saw that there exists a set that we call T, which is not measurable. 
But some lecture ago, I claimed that also this inclusion is true. So that there exists um, a measurable set which is not a Borel set, okay? So we will need to construct this before proving a counterexample for what I said before. Okay. So somehow this is, is related with this question. So is the pre-image of a measurable set under a measurable function a measurable set no the answer is no and then we will see that even if you choose a more somehow regular function if you even if you substitute here uh, a continuous function you you can find a counterexample that the pre-image under a, a continuous function of a measurable set, so a continuous function here, a measurable set is not a measurable set, okay? So to do this, we consider the homomorphism that we introduce, the homomorphism H, you remember? H from 0, 1 to 0, 2. So do you remember how it was defined? In a very easy way. Exactly. So you take X and you consider X plus F of X. F is the Cantor's function. So, okay, I just recall you some, some, some fact that we already proved, so nothing to, we had that the measure of H H of K is equal to 1, okay, where K is the counter set. And then we also proved that, I think we proved it, that, uh, um, that we proved that any set, if you, any set with positive outer measure, in, in this case with positive measure, any set with positive outer I put it in the bracket because this case is not important, contains, contains a non-measurable set, okay? Okay, so in this case we can claim that there exists a set A which is not measurable and such that A is contained in H of K, okay?
Okay, now we define, so we let B, we define this set B as the pre-image under H of A. Okay, this is, uh, by construction, this is contained in the counter set. So it must have a uh, measure zero, okay? And so in particular, this means that it is a measurable set. Okay, now we consider the inverse of H, which is still a continuous function because H is an homeomorphism. Okay, so consider H minus one. So now with h minus 1, it, it denotes a function, not the, only the pre-image, okay? So, so it goes from 0, 2, and 0, 1 is continuous, okay? So in particular, measurable. Okay, so now consider the pre-image of h minus 1 of B, of the set B. This is A, which is, which is not measurable, okay? So somehow we construct the, 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 the desired uh, counterexample, okay? Because we know that this is a, a continuous function for which the pre-image of a measurable set B, no, we show that B is measurable, is not a measurable set, okay? Is it clear? Okay. Okay, now, from this, are you, are you, are you fine with this? Okay. Okay, now we see that there exists a measurable set which is not a Borel set. Okay. So we will uh, use uh, this construction somehow, okay? Okay, okay, let B the set introduced before. Before, so we have that the measure of B is zero. Okay, now assume that B is also, B is measurable, of course. And assume, we argue by contradiction, assume that B is also um, a Borel set, okay? Assume that B is also a Borel set. So from this, okay, if B, if B would be a Borel set, then we have that, then so the pre-image under a measurable function H, H minus 1 is A, so what is the contradiction? Exactly. So A is not measurable, and so we, we, we get a contradiction, okay? Okay, so with this cor corollary, we show that indeed also this inclusion is, is strict, okay? 
Okay, now we come back to our question about the composition between, um, between Borel and the measurable function. Okay. So let G continues. And F measurable. So is F composed G? Measurable. Okay, no, of course, no. So, but how to prove this? So, one way to prove this is the following you can, you can exhibit a counterexample. So, you fix G to be equal to. Uh, H minus one, and so <coughs> I keep the notation that I used before, and F is the characteristic function of uh, of B. Okay, so this is continuous and this is uh, measurable. Okay, and then we check if F composition with G to minus one. So somehow, if the level set of this composition is, is a measurable set. OK, this is what? This is H. Um, OK, then you substitute our choice now. H minus 1 minus 1 of key B. OK. Sorry, I don't. A, I don't know. <laughs> Where? Here? Ah, you, you are, you're answering. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have, okay. The, the final, yes, sure. I, I will, I, I'm going by step. Yeah, yeah, but sure. Okay, this is A, which is. As you said, it's not, it's not measurable. So we prove. So we show that the level set of, um, of this composition will lead to a non measurable set. OK, now we change a bit argument. Now, we don't change argument, but we'll prove. Um, some other consequence of the definition of measurable function. OK, we consider a sequence of measurable function, and we want to say something about uh, the supremum, the liminf, the lim sup. OK, so let fn be a sequence of measurable function. with the same domain. OK, then, then the function allora, 
So we have the supremum of a finite number f1, fn, the infimum of f1, fn, and then the sup of fn, the inf of fn, and then the lim sup which of a fan the means uh, ah okay no <laughs> okay you can okay just just a note like this or either you can also use this uh, notation with for the limb soup limb with with the, with the bar of the top and here you can use um, limb with a bar on the <coughs> on the bottom, okay, okay, but uh, is are measurable are, are all measurable, okay. Okay, okay, the proof is simple somehow. Uh, Okay, I start directly from here, okay. So the soup of Fn less or equal than alpha is equal to the x such that for any n integer f of n is less than alpha and this is equal to the intersection of n of this set of the type fn is less or equal than alpha. Then what about the inf? You can express the inf in terms of the soup. So you have that. Uh, um, okay, of course these are all measurable. No? Okay, then you have that infimum of a fn over n can be viewed as the minus the supremum over n or minus fn. Okay. Then what about uh, limb soup and limb inf? I recall you the, the definition of these two limits. You have that limb soup of fn is what? Is a combination somehow of the infimum and the supremum soup of k larger or equal than n of fk and by the previous and this is measurable it's measurable okay because of the step before and in analogy the mean is uh, you exchange the role here of the supremum of n of the infimum of k larger than n of k is measurable. <laughs> okay, and then we are done. Okay, so now we have to introduce um, the concept of um, somehow almost everywhere. Probably you already you already encountered this this notion. So do you know what it means that a property is satisfied almost everywhere? What does it mean? It means no, no, answer me. Tell me. Exactly, okay. So I just introduced it properly because we will use it a lot. So P of X, property P of X is satisfied almost 
everywhere in E if we have that measure of the subs the, the set of the x in E such that P of x is false, it's not satisfied, is zero. Okay. So in particular, just to give you some example, you can say that, for instance, you have that two function f and g are equal almost everywhere. Okay, if f and g have the same domain, <coughs> the measure of the set where they differ as measure zero. Okay, another example is that f of n converts to g almost everywhere if and only if oh, with this I, I, I mean uh, point-wise convergence of course if the limit of fn is equal to g of x as n goes to plus infinity for any x in um, call e the domain um, the domain of definition minus f where the measure of f is equal to zero, okay? Okay, then we want to prove uh, this proposition okay you start by a measurable function so if f is a measurable function which coincide almost everywhere with another function g so what can we say about g in terms of measurability okay and assume that f is equal to g almost everywhere. So then, of course, we have that also g is measurable, OK? So how is the idea here to prove? So basically, we have to, to study, <coughs> for instance, to say something about the measurability of this set here, OK? So the idea here is to split this set into, into set. OK, so the note with, we first the note with E, the set of x such that, such that f of x is different from g of x. And uh, by assumption, we have that the measure of E is 0. OK, then we can express this set here as the union of two sets. OK, has the set. Uh, assume that uh, um, f and g are defined in some set A. Okay, this is the, the common domain. Okay, x in A minus E, where 
g of x is larger than alpha union x in E, where g of x is larger than alpha. OK, so we have that. Here we can replace g with f. OK. Union um, okay, larger than alpha. This is a measurable set. This is measurable because as measure zero. So finally we have that all of this is measurable. So just to be precise, you, ca you can look at it as you can still split this as the x in A such that f of x is larger than alpha, which is measurable, minus E. But of course it's. Okay, now we, we try to compose measurable function because we will need this somehow uh, easy notion of composition between measurable function in order to define the Lebesgue integral, okay? Okay, so we, we, we will say that f from e to r is a simple function okay simple function if it is measurable f is measurable and if it takes just a finite number of values Only a finite uh, number of values. Okay, this is a definition, but what we need actually is this uh, uh, equivalence provided by this remark is that it tells you that f is simple if and only if there exists a finite number of set a ai measurable okay and the corresponding values ci and r, so take i which goes from 1 to n, okay, such that you can express f of x, so is what you expect, as the sum from i which goes from 1 to n, ci key ai of x, okay? So it's a linear combination of, of characteristic function of measurable set. Okay, so let's prove this. Okay. Okay, so just start from this. Okay, this fact is easy because, okay, F is measurable. Uh, 
Uh, okay, it's measurable because it's a linear combination. It is a linear combination of um, of measurable function. Okay, linear combination. of measurable function and then uh, the fact that uh, f takes only um, finite number of values you can see this because it can takes uh, the values that it can takes is okay c1 cn then if for instance uh, in principle, these are not disjoint, so they can overlap. So you can also have this situation. You can have C1 plus C2, C1 plus C3, and uh, you can have actually all the possible sum, but still they are finite, okay? Takes and takes only um, those, uh, can take uh, only those, uh, those values, okay? Okay, so the reverse implication, we, uh, we have a simple function, and we want to prove that we can express it in that way. Okay, uh, okay, we know that f is simple, so it takes only finite uh, number of values, so we can order them. So just, so since f is simple, we have that the codomain of f uh, is, for instance, b1, b2, b, bn, okay, finite values. And then we consider the pre-image under f of these values, and we define it as bi, bi will would be the pre-image under f of this uh, single uh, single point pre-image. Sorry. Okay. In particular, these bi are also disjoint. Okay, these bi are disjoint. The reunion gives you the the domain. Okay, union of bi to n gives you uh, the, uh, the domain is, uh, is e, okay? And so this tells you that basically that you can express f of x as the union of b i key b i of x, okay? Okay, then we want to um, somehow uh, consider some uh, particular class of simple function that we shall call step function. Okay. So step function are the simple function for which in this representation, bi are uh, in particular intervals, okay? say that h is, is a step function okay if if it, if it is a, a simple function it admits the following representation. OK, 
okay with the following representation we have that h of x is equal to a i key i i of x i from 1 to n where i i are intervals okay Okay. Okay. So then consider the following lemma. So now the aim will be to somehow um, to use this step function or, or the simple function to approximate measurable function, okay? So the lemma is the following. It tells you that f from a, b to r, r bar actually, is uh, is a non negative um, measurable function okay then we can construct There exist a sequence, an increasing sequence of simple function. call them fn such that for any x in a b we have that the, lim the limit of fn of x is equal to f of x Okay, the point-wise limit, of course. Okay, so we have to construct this uh, increasing sequence of simple function. Okay, one way to, to do this is to define fn in this way, fn of x as, for instance, a function which takes the value i minus 1 divided by 2n for the points such that f of x is in between i minus 1 to n the same values and i divided to n for okay for some i among one and n to the n okay and b equal to n if uh, if f of x 
is larger or equal than n. Okay. So here, if you substitute the last values of i here, you, you, you get n, okay? So this is the limit somehow <coughs> of, of that, okay? Okay, these are simple functions. Okay, these are simple functions because they, they take only finite values, uh, finite, finite number of values. And uh, moreover, they are, they are measurable because this set here, the set of x for which this is satisfies are measurable because f is measurable, okay? So um, fn are simple function. Because the set well it takes constant values uh, are measurable because f is measurable okay Okay, so then what about the convergence? Okay, the easy case is that if f of x, in the point for which f of x is equal to uh, plus infinity, then it's true, okay? Then you have that f of n of x are equal to n, and as we have convergence. Then, if f of x is a point, so if x is a point for which f of x is finite, okay, then by construction, you have that fn of x minus f of x is less or equal than zero. And moreover, you can check it. Moreover, you can say that you can see that there exists. So this is somehow a bound uh, from from below. And moreover, there exists. Uh, now we, we we check the bound from above. There exists some hen such that for any n larger than n bar, you have that f of x minus fn of x is less than 2 minus n. So basically you put them together, so you have that f of x minus fn of x is less or equal than 2 minus n. So you have uh, convergence. And what else? Okay, and then by construction, they are an increasing sequence, okay? Uh, n times to the, to, to, two to the power n, okay? Okay, and then you have that fn is less or equal n plus one. This is by construction, okay? Okay, and then we we have done. Okay, now this is a very easy remark. Uh, if you remember here, we okay we start by um, with f, which is a measurable function and non-negative. Okay, if we remove this hypothesis on the sign, we can still say something about a possible uh, approximation of this f. 
Okay, so how can we argue? So this is, uh, if you want, uh, a remark. Okay, so if you have f, let f be a measurable function. Uh, okay, then you can uh, construct is the sequence of simple function okay such that these times you have that um, the absolute values of, of a fan is increasing okay and you have that the limit of fn of x is equal to f of x okay and um, okay this is uh, quite quite easy to see so who would you argue i mean we prove in, in, the, in, the, in the lemma before, we prove that if you start by a function which is measurable and non-negative, you can construct in the way that, that we, we saw uh, a sequence of, uh, of simple function no? which uh, converges to, to f. Now, somehow, we just remove the fact, uh, the hypothesis on the sign. So f might change sign. How is usually the trick to... Yeah, exactly. So you can split f uh, as the positive part minus the negative part and apply the, 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 the proposition before separately for the two, okay? Okay, so uh, you know that f can be uh, decomposed in terms of the positive and the negative part. These are both non-negative function, okay? f plus and f minus are both non-negative. Mm, okay, I just briefly recall you what is the definition. So you have that f plus is equal to f of x when f of x is larger or equal than zero and zero otherwise, while f minus of x, uh, f minus of x, the negative part is equal to minus f of x when f of x is negative, so you still obtain a positive function, a negative function, and zero otherwise, okay? And then you apply, apply the, the theorem, the, the lemma before, twice, before uh, two f plus and f minus, okay, so then uh, the, the, um, this sequence would be the, um, will be fn plus, of course, minus fn minus, okay. Okay, now just a remark, really quick remark. You have that if, uh, um, okay, if f, okay, f goes from A to R is measurable and finite, and finite 
Okay, then you can say a little bit more about the, this kind of convergence. You have that then Fn uh, converts to F uniformly, no? Uniformly. Because if you remember at some point we, we showed that Fn, okay, Fn of x was less than F of x was less than 2 minus n. So basically you have uniform convergence, okay, if they are finite. Okay, and then uh, I just state probably uh, this theorem that we will see the proof tomorrow. Okay, you have let f be a measurable function Okay, define it on an interval on a b okay, and assume that is uh, it is finite almost everywhere, and with this I mean that it takes uh, um, that f takes the values uh, the values plus and minus infinity only on a set, at most on a set of uh, measure zero, okay? Only on a set of measure zero. Okay, then how can we approximate this measurable function in terms of easier one? So we can say that given any um, epsilon positive, it's arbitrary small, we can find a step function step function okay, such that we have this somehow this new notion of, uh, of approximation such that uh, okay, step function, uh, call it H, from A, B to R, okay, such that the measure of the point X in A, B, for which uh, these two functions the difference between these two functions is larger than epsilon, this measure is less than epsilon, okay? And then we can say, we can say even more, we can perform this kind of approximation in terms of not only um, a step function but a continuous function. We can say this, the same and moreover, Okay, moreover, there exists a continuous function G from AB to R such that the same is true uh, here such that uh, actually, um, such that, okay, uh, the measure of x in a b um, of uh, f of x minus g of x is larger or equal than epsilon, is less than epsilon, okay? So also, the, I mean, also this statement must be read that given epsilon, you can find this continuous function because in principle, the continuous function will depend on epsilon, of course. Okay. Okay, the, the proof is very long. And uh, just before 
concluding, I will, uh, I will just prove some lemma that will be useful to, to prove this proposition, this theorem. Okay. Okay, you consider three function f, g, and h defined on uh, the interval with values in the extended real line. All the, the three functions are all measurable and uh, measurable. Okay, then we would like to uh, to achieve a kind of triangle inequality or something that that looks like and okay and let epsilon be a positive number then we define this set the set a which is uh, the set uh, uh, where f of x minus g of x uh, is larger than epsilon larger or equal then you define B as the set uh, where f of x minus h of x is larger than epsilon over 2. And C, what remains? The set where h and g, h of x minus g of x, are larger or equal than epsilon over 2 again. Okay, so what we want to provide is that so what can you say can we say about the measure of a intuitively No, no, right, it's measurable for sure, because they're all measurable. But I mean, how can you estimate the measure of A in terms of the measure of B and C? They are less, equal, um, greater or equal? This what? The measure of A is less or? Exactly. OK, then the measure of A is less or equal. Then the measure of B plus, okay, the measure of C, okay. Somehow it's enough to prove that A, if we prove this, we are done, okay. Okay, so we have that. If X, so we, we want to prove this, okay. If X is in A, so we know that by definition that uh, is this a proof? Uh? Is this a proof? Yeah. No, this is okay. Uh, see, this is a proof. Here start the proof. Okay, this, this is the claim, this is the thesis, and, and now we are starting to prove. We observe that if we prove this, it's enough, okay? Okay, so we know that if x is in a, then by definition f of x minus g of x is larger or equal than epsilon. Okay. And now we want to prove that this x must belong at least to one of these two. Because if it doesn't belong to neither of them, we, we get a contradiction, okay? So we have that. f of x minus g of x is less or equal than, this is just the triangle inequality, h of x plus h of x minus g of x. And we have that, okay, this is um, by definition, so we have that this sum is larger or equal than epsilon, okay? Okay, so we cannot have that both of them are less than epsilon over two, okay? So at least one of these must be, must be larger than epsilon over two. 
So we have that at least one of these two uh, terms, f of x minus h of x, or the other, h of x minus g of x, must be uh, larger than um, epsilon over 2. So in this, in other terms, means that x must belong to to the union, no? to B union C, because it must belong either to B or to C, or to both of them, okay, of course. And so this is done, so we can conclude the proof. Okay, now as we stop here today. And, okay, we can stop. <laughs>